thanks for making the time for the conversation, Jason. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. Jason, I wonder if you can tell us uh, first how you got into body sculpting. Uh, back in 2000, a good friend of mine was competing, and uh, basically I saw the transformation um, that Chris went through over a number of years and um, decided it was pretty much as a bet initially to see if I could uh, go through the conditioning system, the food size, and the change of lifestyle. And from there, made the change and competed in 2001 was my first first uh, natural novice comp. And what were some of the biggest transformations that you went through when you began competing? Physiologically wise, um, you know, going through the decrease of, of body fat, uh, an increase of hypertrophy, um, muscle. Um, I'd quickly got my food uh, on track and um, put on about five to seven kilos of mass pretty much over six months and um, ended up competing at uh, about 93 on stage uh, and about 3% body fat, 4% body fat. But the main, the main changes were definitely the, uh, the food. And you've recently gotten into running competitively. How does that change your training regime from what you were doing before? Well, from competing in 2000, finished in 2006, I um, needed to show a different side to my athleticism. So I started focusing a lot more on body weight, a lot more ballistic movements, a lot more plyometrics, and uh, felt that I, like I'd always missed the boat with regard to my sprinting and uh, decided to uh, just train lighter, train more explosive over the years and finally found myself a good sprint coach in September 2010 um, but the training changed dramatically from doing a lot of um, doing a lot of explosive movement, a lot of one-off reps and 10 reps, one set to, to finally uh, do more anaerobic, aerobic work a lot of block work so the, cha- the change in training was dramatic um, less gym, more work on uh, bounds, bounding, uh, as well as all the short, sharp stuff, a lot of uh, block work, 20 meters, 60 meters, and 120. What you're doing takes a lot of mental focus. Do you have any exercises that you do to maintain that mental focus? I generally take um, a good 20 minutes of art, uh, out of each day just to do some, some mental imagery work. So, um, I'll go through the same routine. I'll find a nice little quiet spot in the middle of my day. And particularly with sprinting, I'll just find a nice little spot and, and just go through my preparation of my mind, um, putting my blocks out, getting warm. So more from a mental perspective, the course of the physical side, but seeing things in color, um, working on breathing, um, and really just focusing on, on the event. So based on my first one, um, getting warm, going through all my block work, pre-work, breathing, to then going through the actual race uh, and winning the race. But I'll generally um, dedicate 20 minutes per day. How do you compare your racing now to uh, the fitness competitions that you were doing before? It's definitely a lot more nerve-wracking. I mean, I would typically compete for natural uh, sculpting from 2000, 2000 and 2001, 2006. I predominantly... Most of my work, six months of the year, was, was preparation. So, you know, eating very, very well, sleeping, getting plenty of rests, um, putting in my nutrients and, and training um, three times a day with regards to weight and, and cardio. We would compete typically twice a year. So it was a lot less, lot less nervous energy prior to competing for some reason. Whereas I find now with, with sprinting, um, I'm sprinting every week. I was sprinting every week until, you know, prior to being injured. But I find I was getting very, very nervous. Um, a lot more nervous energy, but yeah, there were the main differences. Um, competing for some reason wasn't as nerve-wracking. And Jason, you've gotten into barefoot running as well. Why, why have you chosen to take the path of barefoot running? Um, I had been racing now for, uh, since first first race was October. Um, I raced November uh, of 2010, and I was having continual, um, we call a pulse impingement, a heel impingement, that no one could really uh, pinpoint. And I saw a lot of information come through. I did a lot of research on the internet, and I saw um, one of the Australian runners, um, I 
think it was Yara or one of the girls, and I saw her racing barefoot. She'd just come back after a stint from the UK. And um, I was reading a blog on uh, South of Powell, and one of his secrets were barefoot running. He ran as a kid with bare feet on the, on the beach and so forth, and um, decided to, to look up um, barefoot running. And um, lo and behold, uh, Vibram Shoes came up, or Vibram, Five Fingers came up, and I then contacted Sally and started running, doing a bit of work on the beach barefoot, and then wanted to then um, do some running outside as well on non-sand surfs. And um, that's where you guys came in and um, the research, you know, did me well. So I've just started doing barefoot running. As a as a positive from that, I've been injured since last year and running this year, um, definitely getting strong through the feet um, and having a lot less um, Achilles problems as well. So this year is pretty much now building year for next year to just season 2012 to get ready for stall. You must be extremely tuned into your musculature and very aware of any uh, physiological changes that you're going through. Can you describe any of the physiological changes that you experienced when you began running barefoot? You mentioned the Achilles and so on. Uh, what else have you noticed? There were three three major things, three major um, contributors to, to my right foot. An impinged ankle, which really limited my range of movement, both plantar and dorsiflexion. Um, the thickening of the Achilles as well as plantar fasciitis. Now, I'm not getting, since I've been running barefoot, I'm not getting the pain through the plantar fascia. Uh, my Achilles have settled down. Thirdly, my um, impinged ankle is, is is on the mend, so I'm having a lot less inflammation through the, uh, the joint. Um, full range, fuller range again, and uh, I'm back running now, so I'm back, back doing some pre-season stuff and feeling a million dollars. And Jason, you run a business of training other people. I wonder if you can tell us why your clients normally come to you. Is there anything in particular that they're normally looking for when they come to you? Um, clients, I've trained, you know, 700 people, you know, six, 700 people over the last eight years. And um, uh, the main reason is, is variety. You know, I offer a lot more variety than the most trainers out there. Um, the clients I've had are very diverse over the years, um, all different levels of fitness. So I guess it's more my experience and more my uh, knowledge of, of training different clients, but definitely the variety from boxing to body weight training to, to weights to conditioning to sports specific. And I've trained just about everybody in those areas. And I've also trained myself, so I know exactly um, and how to prescribe certain um, training regimes. Jason, what you've been able to accomplish is uh, truly exceptional and uh, certainly people will come to you because of what you've been able to accomplish. But what do you read into your accomplishments and, and how significant is what you've been able to achieve? Well, bas basically, I mean, I've, I've had a life of sport. I mean, I've been training since 17, so um, I don't look at it as, you know, being able to run sub-11 seconds at you know the age of 37. I want it to be lows, and I'm, I'm unfortunately hasn't gotten down to low tens purely based on my injury. But um, I'm planning to come back next year and run, you know, real low tens. Um, I try to stay diverse, you know, from playing professional cricket in the UK to to doing natural spring to 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 sprinting. I've just try to always keep ahead of the game with regard to to training techniques. So I'm I'm you know pliable when it comes to choosing a sport, but. I wouldn't put it down to any key factor. I'm very, very strong mentally, uh, and I'm very goal-driven, but I um, always wanted to give uh, different different sports and different challenges a go. But I will be getting into more of an endurance sport, uh, whether that's cycling or, or, or something that have been boxing, but um, I guess more mental than anything else. I enjoy the mental challenge. Is that the trigger to the endurance sports, then, is looking for a different kind of mental challenge? Yeah, I mean, I... Along with a good friend of mine, um, James Sorensen, last Monday, there's a trail down in Melbourne, Ferntree Gully, Thousand Stairs, Cucada Trail. It's um, 1350 metres. We did that 30 times last month. It took us 14 hours, 38. And we did it yeah, 30 times over the course of the day and night. So I enjoy the mental aspect. I enjoy the, the, the mental anguish, so to speak. Um, and it's it's challenging. I like to challenge myself, not just physically, but mentally. And that's 
the direction through pre-season that I'll get into the cycling because I also enjoy cycling as well. That sounds great, Jason. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us today and all the best with your upcoming season. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. You bet.